Hey everyone, John Reed here, author of 50 Things to See with the Telescope. Welcome to the Astronomy Challenge series. This is the first Astronomy Challenge in the series where I recommend either using binoculars or a small telescope. In this video, we're going to look at three targets in the winter sky. This is Learn to Stargaze. In the last two videos, we learned how to use a small telescope and binoculars for stargazing. If you haven't watched video number 23 on binoculars or video number 22 on beginner telescopes, I highly recommend viewing those before continuing. These three targets are found in the winter sky and are best viewed an hour after sunset. If it's autumn and you want to see these targets, that's totally possible, but you may have to wait until after midnight to see them rising high enough in the sky to see. Let's start off really easy with a popular open star cluster called the Pleiades, or the Seven Sisters. This target is visible without a telescope or binoculars, even from the city. Many people often confuse the Pleiades with the Little Dipper, and I guess based on its shape, you might even nickname it the Little Little Dipper. Without a telescope, be sure to count the stars. Most people can see six or seven. Now look at it with binoculars or a small telescope. You'll see so many stars in the image depending on the seeing conditions, possibly more than you can even count. The Pleiades is pretty easy to find, even without star hopping, that is, using neighboring constellations as a guide. If it's autumn, you'll find the Pleiades rising in the east. In the winter, assuming you live in the northern hemisphere, the Pleiades will be above and to the right of Orion's belt. The nearest bright star is Aldebaran. You may recall we talked about Aldebaran in video 18 about the winter hexagon. The second target we're going to look at is called the Hades. This is also visible without binoculars or a telescope. However, by adding binoculars or a telescope, you can see so many more stars. This is the closest open star cluster to Earth. The bright star, Aldebaran, is not actually part of this cluster as it is much closer to us than the rest of the stars. This cluster also makes up the asterism or star pattern called the V of Taurus, as this cluster lies in the middle of the constellation Taurus. To find the Hades, use Orion's belt as a reference and then find Aldebaran's position in the winter hexagon. Finally, let's check out the Great Orion Nebula, or M42. This target is also technically visible without a telescope, well, just barely as a little smudge, but binoculars or a small telescope bring out much more detail in the cluster's nebulosity. Nebulosity basically means space cloudiness. The nebula is a great cloud of gas and dust where new stars are being formed. It's for this reason the Orion Nebula is nicknamed the Star Factory. To find the Orion Nebula, first look at Orion's belt, then picture Orion, the mythological hunter. Then picture a sword running down his leg with what looks like these three stars. But on closer inspection, you'll find that the middle star in the sword is not a pinpoint of light, but is in fact the nebula itself. Well, if you're following along in the 50 things to see with a telescope activity workbook, all three of these targets are found on page 33. I highly encourage you to draw what you see through your telescope or through your binoculars, recording your observations in your own unique way. I hope you enjoyed observing the Pleiades, the Hades, and the Orion Nebula. Please subscribe so you don't miss the next video. And remember, the future is looking up. Thank you.